This will be our last uh, message on the series of the fall of Babylon. <clears throat> this is the 14th and uh, we began this February 27th of last year <clears throat> and I uh, want to say that I have very much enjoyed what the Lord has given us. <clears throat> uh, yes. The things that, uh, that we've seen here have been very good and helpful <clears throat> for me personally and have been enlightening. <clears throat> And I also think that this is not just happenstance that the Lord has uh, brought this to the surface and revealed these things to us at this time. <clears throat> uh, I think if a person takes note of the generation in which we live and the time in which we live, that uh, I'm not making any predictions or anything like that, but, but the Lord raises the awareness of His saints when He's about to do something. And I... I my opinion is that our awareness is being raised on this subject and it could very well be that we see Babylon fall. <clears throat> yeah. Amen. So uh, that would be a good thing to look forward to. <clears throat> and this is, uh, although parts of this are still mysterious <clears throat> as some of the details, how the Lord will work this out, and precisely what will happen and when he will do this. There's still some of the fall of Babylon that is mysterious to us, but, but this is not like some kind of uh, fantasy that we're talking about here, like some uh, sort of uh, science fiction thing that some people believe in that, that's not ever really going to happen, but it's just nice to talk about it because it makes us feel good. This is not that. This is the word of the Lord that Babylon is going to fall. So we see this, we believe it, and we declare it. <clears throat> I know uh, from the very outset of this, I knew that it would not be practical for me to uh, do a comprehensive coverage of the fall of Babylon because there's just there's a lot there to be seen. And uh, <coughs> excuse me, I knew from the outset that I would have to uh, just kind of pick some high, lo high points and, and main things to go over. For example, if you were to, someone were to ask you to write a book on the city of Jerusalem, well, where would you start and where would you end? And you couldn't, you couldn't make a comprehensive coverage of its history and the details of this present city, of its geography, and you couldn't, you just couldn't do it. So you'd have to just pick some high points and to give the general idea. So that's what I've done here is just uh, choose some selected passages especially from Revelation chapter 18 and Jeremiah chapters 50 and 51 to <clears throat> give us the main the main thought. <clears throat> it is inevitable that Babylon is going to fall and to rise no more. And that that is the title of this final message to rise no more. <clears throat> Now, if you've thought much about this, and if you've studied the scriptures, maybe you've never heard anyone say it, but <clears throat> you might have thought and noticed this, that Babylon has a history of rising again. Babylon did not end when Nebuchadnezzar died, or when his, his two sons that followed him. It did not end with their deaths. Babylon did not end when the Medes and the Persians took over. <clears throat> so we want to review some of this. <clears throat> the pinnacle of ancient Babylon was the reign of Nebuchadnezzar, and I know I've, I've mentioned this before, but I want to do it again, talk about Nebuchadnezzar's dream of the great image, <clears throat> which is perhaps a more profound dream than we've seen, and so it bears repeating. Daniel told him <clears throat> an interpretation of his dream, Daniel 2, 38, Wheresoever the children of men dwell, the beasts of the field and the fowls of the heaven hath he given into thine hand, and hath made thee ruler over them all. Thou art this head of gold. <clears throat> now we have spoken lately, especially in our study through Ephesians, about this truth of the head bringing nourishment and sustenance to the body. It controls and coordinates the body. <clears throat> The body is only living and functioning as it is attached to the head. <clears throat> the body is nourished by means of the head. Now that's the way that the body of Christ functions. <clears throat> but there is similar but, but yet different in a different way. This is how Babylon functions also. Nebuchadnezzar, <clears throat> being that head of gold, 
was a pattern of things to come. Now, he, Nebuchadnezzar is not providing sustenance to this image <clears throat> in that sense. It is significant that this is an image that he saw in his dream. This is not a living body, but it's, it's an, a non-living, it, it's a, just an image. Well, Nebuchadnezzar was the head of that image. He's the one that started started it all, or at least <clears throat> the devil worked, working through him started it. He's the one that set the trend for the rest of the body. He's the one that set the pattern for what the rest of the body would do. <clears throat> <clears throat> I'm not, I'm not suggesting that Satan or Nebuchadnezzar or Babylon ever posed a genuine threat to God's purpose <clears throat> because this was according to God's design. Nebuchadnezzar killed or removed Judah's kings and leaders. What people survived? The siege of Jerusalem were taken captive to Babylon. The temple of God in Jerusalem, the city of God, the singular place where God had placed His name in the earth, Nebuchadnezzar plundered and burned and tore down. <clears throat> After Nebuchadnezzar's death, the Babylonian kingdom perpetuated through his sons. And then 70 years after the captivity of Judah began, ancient, the ancient Babylonian kingdom fell to the Medes and the Persians in a single night. Yeah. But that was not the end of Babylon. Yeah. We know this is true just by the way the scriptures speak of it. Here it is all the way back in Revelation chapter 18. It comes up again. <clears throat> the head of gold was gone, but the rest of the body was to follow. <clears throat> so again, it's significant that this dream was of an image and not a living body. <clears throat> the kingdoms that followed Nebuchadnezzar were not sustained and nourished by him like a head does for a body, but his reign gave, actually gave birth to these other kingdoms <clears throat> who followed his pattern of gathering the whole world under one dominion against God. Although God raised up Cyrus to be his shepherd, the Medes and the Persians continued in the same trends as Babylon and spread the dominion wider, and the Greeks took it further, yet under a different banner, and then the Romans after that. And as each of these great kingdoms fell and the next one rose in its place, <clears throat> it appeared on the earthly level that the former kingdom became obsolete and a completely new kingdom rose up in its place. But actually, when ancient Babylon fell to the Medes and the Persians, <clears throat> in a sense, it rose again in the kingdom of the Medes and the Persians. Again, we're, because we're looking at the source of these kingdoms here, which actually is the devil. That's, that's why we can say this, that the, actually the same thing came up again although it appeared to be different. And when the Medo-Persian Empire fell, Babylon rose again in the kingdom of Grecia. And when the Greek kingdom fell, Babylon rose again in ancient Rome. And when ancient Rome faded off into history, the last of the great world-dominating kingdoms, that was when the stone that Daniel spoke of came into the picture. And in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed, and the kingdom shall not be left to other people, but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. Forasmuch as thou sawest that stone that was cut out of the mountain without hands, and that it break in pieces the iron, the brass, the clay, the silver, and the gold, the great God hath made known to the king what shall come to pass hereafter, and the dream is certain, and the interpretation thereof sure. <clears throat> Jesus, <coughs> in the times of these kings, established his own kingdom <coughs> that would never fall. It is a spiritually kingdom, a spiritual kingdom, and a heavenly kingdom, not an earthly one. When his kingdom was established, it broke in pieces and scattered and consumed these others. He dismembered and scattered the fragments. It didn't take much time, but when Satan saw what had happened, and he was cast down to the earth, having great wrath, knowing that he hath but a short time, he in essence had to change his tactics. Yeah. And Babylon the great, the great city, the great whore, and the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth, rose up in the place of ancient Rome. Thou art this head of gold, Nebuchadnezzar. Babylon rises again under the same spirit, 
that motiv motivated Nebuchadnezzar. <clears throat> now, for centuries, men have thought that the Roman Catholic Church, which rose up in the place of ancient Rome, is Babylon the Great. The Roman Catholic Church was, uh, by comparison, rather crude <clears throat> in its appearance and works because it was the devil's first attempt at this new strategy. He's not as wise as the Lord. <clears throat> so the Roman Catholic Church very obviously appeared the same as the ancient Roman Empire, along with its infamous debaucheries and greed and lust for power and blasphemies against God, which was the pinnacle of Satan's earlier works. Like the earthly kingdoms before her, the Roman Catholic Church tried to overcome the saints and rule the world by brute force, although under a religious flag, <clears throat> and was blatantly blasphemous and very easily identified by anyone who knew the word of God, even though she claimed to be the church of God. But now she too <clears throat> has all but faded off into human history, now struggling to keep any kind of a name for herself in the earth. <clears throat> But now look around you and see, has Babylon gone away or has it risen again? Again, I'm establishing here that this is the history of Babylon is rising up continually in some new form. <clears throat> we must agree that Babylon is now much more difficult to identify. <clears throat> the work has gotten more refined. Satan, in a, in a sense, has gotten more slick in his presentation of what he is doing. <clears throat> It's not like any of the ancient kingdoms that ruled the world by force and military power. It, it has no king. It has no pope. It has no visible kingdom. The devil has gotten more sophisticated in the manner of doing his evil work, but it is the same work. The same wicked spirit that motivated and sustained Nebuchadnezzar and all those kingdoms that followed him is still operating in full force in the churches today. The tactics, tactics have changed, but the intentions and the results among the people of God are the same. So we're, now we're not talking about a political power. We're not talking about who you should vote for or where you should go buy your food. We are speaking of things concerning the people of God and the people and the place where he has put his name. We're speaking about the truth which has fallen in the street. We're speaking about the same things that Babylon has always been known for, which are attempting to remove the name of the Lord from the earth, <clears throat> taking captive the people of God to a land of idolatry, taking the precious things of God and using them in another temple and for other purposes, <clears throat> namely for personal profit in this world. To further pinpoint the matter, we are speaking of abominations that are committed in the churches and of defilement in the professed body of Christ. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemy, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof, from such turn away, for of this sort are they which creep into houses and lead captives silly women laden with sins, led away with divers lust, ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Now as Jannies and Jambres withstood Moses, so do these also resist the truth. Men of corrupt minds reprobate concerning the faith. And we could, sell, could, could well say, and those are the church leaders. <clears throat> we are speaking of the stench of reproach to the name of our God that rises up in the churches in our generation. Ever since Nebuchadnezzar sacked the temple, and took Judah captive to Babylon, Babylon has continued to rise in one form or another, increasing in dominion and influence in the earth. <clears throat> when one kingdom falls, another rises in its place, or when one false doctrine seems to fade away, another one comes up in its place, and yet worse. <clears throat> but the word for today now is that Babylon is going to fall to rise no more. The message in the Word of God is that the due time is coming 
when the wicked spirit that has sustained all of this will be stopped forever. It will be like when Jesus said to the demons when he went to those men, he saw men of the Gergesenes, he said to them, go. And they went. That's what it'll be like when Babylon falls. This wicked spirit, the Lord will just say, stop, and it'll cease. <clears throat> That's what it means when the Holy Spirit says no more. It means not again, never. To help our understanding, I wanted to look at some other places in Scripture where this phrase no more is used. <clears throat> and they shall teach no more every man his neighbor. And again, in Jeremiah 31, 34, I will remember their sin no more. This, ha this has some impact to it. <clears throat> Zechariah 14.21 In that day there shall be no more the Canaanite in the house of the Lord. Romans 11.6 If by grace, then it is no more of works. Otherwise grace is no more grace. But if it be works, then it is no more grace. Otherwise work is no more work. <clears throat> These are matters dealing with our very salvation here. <coughs> Revelation 3.12, Him that overcometh will I make a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go no more out. And they shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more, neither shall the sun light on them, nor any heat. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And one more, Revelation 22, 3, There shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it, and His servants shall serve Him. Now this phrase, no more, is found 228 times in Scripture. But I chose these texts to show the impact. This, this comes with a promise. This is like a promise God makes when he says in these, these contexts, no more. There's a day coming when this will be no more. <clears throat> and also, <coughs> it speaks of a major change, like the, the changing of an epoch. These are major events when one of these no more takes place. <clears throat> Whether the no more is a good word or not depends on which side of the issue you're on. Now, if you want to know the Lord, then they shall teach no more every man his neighbor. That's a good word if you want to know the Lord. <clears throat> in Christ, this is an especially good word. There shall be no more Canaanite in the house of the Lord. And if you found the law to be a hard taskmaster, if by grace, then it is no more of works, is a very good word indeed. <clears throat> now we continue to look for this blessed hope. He shall go no more out, and they shall hunger no more. There shall be no more death and no more curse. These words indicate that there is a change coming when a more blessed state will be the permanent state. But in our text in Revelation 18, we're given the good word that Babylon is going to be no more. And if that word's not strong enough, the Holy Spirit adds a greater emphasis to it in our text in Revelation 18 by saying no more at all. <clears throat> a mighty angel took up a stone like a great millstone and cast it into the sea, saying, Thus with violence shall that great city Babylon be thrown down and shall be found no more at all. And the voice of harpers and musicians and of pipers and trumpeters shall be heard no more at all in thee. And no craftsman of whatsoever craft he be shall be found any more in thee. And the sound of a millstone shall be heard no more at all in thee. And the light of a candle shall shine no more at all in thee. And the voice of the bridegroom and of the bride shall be heard no more at all in thee. For thy merchants were the great men of the earth, for thy, by thy sorceries were all nations deceived. No more at all. That is, just in case you're wondering, not in any form. Amen. Babylon will not be found in any form, not in any earthly kingdom, not in a false church, not a spiritual power or anything else. Babylon will be found no more at all, not at any time henceforth forever, not in any place. Like the millstone that was cast into the sea will sink and be swallowed up, never to be seen or heard again. 
I'm glad that Brother Given brought up this text from Revelation 11.8 recently <clears throat> and clarified that this is speaking of spiritual Babylon and not Jerusalem. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of that great city, talking about <clears throat> the dead bodies of prophets here, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. Now this is not the only place that Sodom is associated with Babylon. Isaiah 13, verses 19 and 20. And Babylon, the glory of kingdoms, the beauty of the Chaldees' excellency, shall be as when God overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah. It shall never be inhabited. Neither shall it be dwelt in from generation to generation. Neither shall the Arabian pitch tent there. Neither shall the shepherds make their fold there. And again, a word concerning Babylon from Jeremiah 50, verse 40. As God overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah and the neighbor cities thereof, saith the Lord, so shall no man abide there. Neither shall any son of man dwell therein. Now at least one reason why Babylon is spiritually called Sodom is because that's how it's going to end. <clears throat> This is what the Spirit means when he says, no more. Tell me now, where are Sodom and Gomorrah and the other cities of the plain? How did the, cities, how did the citizens of those cities live on a daily basis? What was their diet? Where are their works of art? Where are the remnants of their possessions? Where are their grave sites? Show us the museum that contains artifacts of daily life in Sodom. Show us the finding of the geologists, the anthropologists, and the archaeologists from digs in Sodom or Gomorrah. Why do none of these things exist? Why are they not found? Because they were destroyed of God. Amen. Thus shall great Babylon fall to rise no more. Amen. And the voice of harpers and musicians and of pipers... <coughs> and trumpeters shall be heard no more at all in thee. No more will there be a sound emitted from Babylon to appeal to the flesh, to attract men to come to the city and fall into the snare of the great whore. No more sounds of celebration and happiness. No more music for entertainment. No more call of the trumpeters to come back to Babylon. And no craftsman of, or of whatsoever craft he be shall be found any more in thee. There will be no more crafters of corruption, no more crafting of decorations and trinkets to make Babylon look appealing. Babylon is like a craft bazaar, you know, with all kinds of things for sale. No more craftsmen to build or maintain the superstructure of the city and its buildings. No more designers of anything in Babylon. That great city will become defunct and void of all and any kind of skill. And the sound of a millstone shall be heard no more in thee. We have often noted how prolific Babylonian production is. When you just go to a so-called Christian bookstore, you'll see that that's true. <clears throat> in Babylon, the millstone is always turning. There's always some new fodder being manufactured for the people in Babylon. Some new book, some new praise course, some new earth-centered sermon series, some new church growth plan, some new praise chorus, some new perversion of the Word of God being spread around like a disease. What are they going to do with all that merchandise when Babylon falls? The sound of a millstone shall be heard no more at all in thee. Amen. And the light of a candle shall shine no more at all in thee. And yes, there was light in Babylon <clears throat> as long as Babylon stood. This seems to me to go along with what the scripture says we would have healed her, <clears throat> but she is not healed. While the light was there, there was opportunity <clears throat> for the healing of Babylon, but now the light will be withdrawn forever. There was once a little light and some signs of life in Babylon, there was a time when there were some people there who were known by the Lord. But when Babylon falls, the light of a candle shall shine no more at all in thee. And the voice of the bridegroom and of the bride shall be heard no more at all in thee. The joyous voice of the bridegroom with his bride, the future of Babylon. <clears throat> One generation grows old and passes away, and the next generation rises up and marries and perpetuates proliferates the race, <clears throat> but not so when Babylon falls. 
This great city will fall to rise no more. There will be no more Babylon and no more Babylonians. There will be no more bridegrooms and brides to keep that wicked city alive and running. No more at all. Babylon has no more future than Sodom and Gomorrah. None of these things will be found in Babylon because Babylon itself will not be found anymore at all. The Holy Spirit now adds a reason for these things in our text in Revelation 18. <coughs> for thy merchants were the great men of the earth, for by thy sorceries were all nations deceived. <coughs> Why is Babylon going to be thrown down with great violence? Why will that great city be found no more at all? Why is it that the sound of Babylon's harpers and musicians are not going to be heard? Why won't the craftsmen be found? And why won't the sound of the millstone be heard? And why won't the light of the candle shine and the voice of the bridegroom and the bride be heard anymore in Babylon? The answer is, for thy merchants were the great men of the earth, for by thy sorceries were all nations deceived. In other words, the Lord is going to make Babylon disappear from the map because she exalted herself above God. She did business with all the great men of the earth. She was successful and influential all over the world. She deceived the nations with her spiritual trickery. The same iniquity that was being worked out through Nebuchadnezzar continued in spiritual Babylon. And that iniquity didn't originate with Nebuchadnezzar. Again, it originated in Satan. <clears throat> Here is another familiar text from the prophet Isaiah that we've read before from Isaiah 14. And this is a word to the king of Babylon. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit." This is basically the same thing that John saw in Revelation 18. <clears throat> Whomever or whatever seeks to exalt themselves to be like the Most High will be brought down. And that is what Babylon has done, and that is how she will fall. <clears throat> she will rise no more at all. Babylon is soon to become a non-entity. <clears throat> like Sodom and Gomorrah, all that will remain of the great city is the record that God chooses to leave of it, if he chooses to leave a record of it. <clears throat> Since the time that Jesus ascended up on high and the devil was cast down to the earth having great wrath, the saints of God have had to, to war and deal with a spiritual Babylon <clears throat> and wrestle against it. It's difficult for us to comprehend that there will be a time when this war will cease. <clears throat> It's scarcely comprehensible to us that there will be a time when there is no more reproach to the name of the Lord coming from the churches. That's terrible to have to say that, but that's the truth. We've, not only our generation, but generations before us have all lived with this, with the Lord being reproached in the churches. <clears throat> <coughs> There will no longer be such a thing as a church that flirts with and beckons to the world or that designs gatherings to appeal to the world. <clears throat> the world and the church will be divorced from one another. The world will not be welcomed in the churches and the flesh will not be satisfied there. We long for a time when sinners, if they would come to an assembly, they would both fear and repent. <clears throat> at the gathering of the people of God and not feel comfortable but compelled, be compelled to cry out to God for mercy and for forgiveness. Can you imagine a time when you will speak the word of God and it will be received by people in the churches without the need for lengthy dissertations on the meaning of words and telling people what the Bible says on the subject? Can you imagine going on vacation and stopping on the Lord's Day at an unfamiliar place and going to an assembly and not be disappointed. Yeah. And finding that the gospel was preached and the saints were built up and edified and you were glad to be there. <clears throat> mm -hmm. 
these are things that are difficult for us to imagine because we live in the time of the peak of Babylonian success. <clears throat> The saints from all ages have had to deal with some particular corruption that targeted their generation. When one wicked trend appears to be going away, another always seems to rise in its place, taking hold on faithless and unbelieving church people, carrying them away captive to Babylon, bringing shame and reproach to the name of the Lord. In our time when technology has made the world a smaller place, Babylon has been able to pass her cup of abominations much farther and much faster, encompassing the globe in just a short time. We've been witnesses of those corruptions and defilements being spread from one place to another like waves of the ocean covering the earth, ceaselessly rolling along. Some of these waves in my own lifetime have been like the wave of the premillennial doctrine for example. Many church people don't even know that the entire system that they've bought into is false and this devilish teaching has not always been as prominent as it is now. They're not familiar with scripture and have been taken captive by doctrines of demons. This is one of the great waves that has rolled across the world. I remember a few decades ago relationships was the buzzword in all the churches. You could scarcely go to an assembly anywhere where relationships was not the theme of the sermon and the Bible class and all the studies during the week <clears throat> based upon of course non-biblical humanistic carnal concepts of relationships and there was the wave of the family focus that swept across the world there was the wave of installing psychologist offices in the churches for counseling and there was Larry Burkett and the finances waves that swept across the churches there was the wave of you gotta have a gymnasium or a multi-purpose room or a family center or a community outreach building for the neighborhood that rolled across the churches there's the praise and worship wave and the 40 days of purpose wave and the entertainment wave that brought with it lighting systems and sound systems video and music and words that sound just like the world sometimes even including special stage effects like smoke <clears throat> just like at a rock concert there was a wave of openly and blatantly welcoming the world into the churches perfect people not allowed how many times have you seen that sign on church billboards, hmm? <clears throat> offering worldly sounding music, coffee shops on site, a policy of wearing anything you want, short messages if there's a message at all, with no pressure or awareness of what God commands of all people. There is a wave of professing love for the world and hatred for any believer who rejects the world. We've seen the rise and spread of this wave of lies that are taught in our day that sin is okay, that God actually expects you to sin and He loves you anyway and His grace just covers all your sin so you just keep on sinning and don't worry about it. This kind of wave has covered the world now in our day. <clears throat> now these are just a few things that I've observed in my own short lifetime. These things didn't come and go like waves of the sea. Each of these doctrines came into the churches and remained there. And when one wave seemed to fade away, the next one just came and built on top of it. <clears throat> Every one of these doctrines and more still has a grip on the churches of our generation. When the latest thing in churches begins to fade a little, here comes some new, latest thing to build in its place. Babylon continues to build and perpetuate itself. When it has appeared to fall off and die down, <clears throat> there has always been some great new thing to rise up in its place. Now this is because the dynamo that runs all of this <clears throat> and perpetuates all of this is a spirit sent by Satan. Although unbelieving men have helped to perpetuate it, it did not come from men. These things come from our ancient foe, right. as Martin Luther said. <coughs> Times appear to change and people appear to be different now than they were centuries ago, but this wicked spirit has been consistent in its corruption of the church ever since the church was made obvious. There is always some new thing spreading through the churches because the same Babylonian spirit continues to work. And that's, I don't mean to wear you out with these things, brother, and that's my point here is that Babylon has persisted now 
for centuries. This has it's persisted, continually rising up and bringing wickedness into the churches and reproaching the name of the Lord. <clears throat> this is so. This has been going on for a very long time, but the people of God have never gotten accustomed to it. That's because we know that the day is coming when these waves of iniquity are going to stop. Amen. And it won't stop because it wore out or because the people got bored with it. It will stop because our God will make Babylon fall. Amen. And He will avenge us. <coughs> Excuse me. Someday Babylon the Great is going to fall and there will not be any new wicked thing to rise up in its place. Babylon will fall to rise no more in any form. Then the new thing in the churches will be holiness. Then the new thing will be worshiping God in spirit and in truth. Then the new thing will be knowing God from the least of them to the greatest of them. Then the new thing will be honoring the Lord at His table. And the preaching of the gospel of Jesus Christ and righteousness by faith and feeding the church of God which he hath purchased with his own blood will be new things in the churches. Then the new thing will be doing all things unto edification, and being separate from the world, and touching not the unclean thing. Instead of waves of false doctrines, and waves of defilement and corruption in the churches, there will be waves of glory and honor to God that will roll around the world. That it will be heard again in the churches... This is that which was spoken by the prophet. For the earth shall be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. The knowledge of the present reign of Christ will be coming up and the world will be going down. I am careful to say now that this does not mean that there will be no opposition to the people of God or to the truth. <clears throat> It is at some time close to the fall of Babylon that Satan will gather the nations together and compass the camp of the saints about with the intent of destroying them, <coughs> those people who could not be deceived by the great horror. But what will be new for the people of God is that their opposition will no longer be coming from the churches. There will be no more perils among brethren. There won't be any more Diotrephes who loveth to have the preeminence among the brethren. No more Hymenaeus and Alexander in the churches who blaspheme and make shipwreck of the faith. No more Hymenaeus and Philetus in the churches teaching that the resurrection is past already. There won't be any more fornicators in the churches like at Corinth or like there are presently in many places. No more will the churches need to be corrected like Corinth did or <clears throat> to be told like the Galatians and the Colossians that we cannot be saved by works of the law or by Jewish observances or any combination of faith and works. No more will it be necessary to rebuke some for being busybodies like in Thessalonica. No more will it be necessary to inform a church that they have not comprehended or they have forgotten the centrality of Christ and how he saved us, like Paul had to write to the Hebrews. No more will Jesus be saying to the churches, you have left your first love. No more will he have to say, you hold to the doctrine of Balaam and cast a stumbling block before the people of God. No more will he have to say to any church, you have allowed that woman Jezebel to seduce my servants. No longer will the Lord have to say to any church, I know you have a reputation for being alive, but you are dead. No longer will the Lord have to say to the churches, your lukewarmness makes me sick and I'm about to spew you out of my mouth. Instead, <coughs> it will be said, he hath not beheld iniquity in Jacob, neither hath he seen perverseness in Israel. The Lord his God is with him, and the shout of a king is among them. Amen. God brought them out of Egypt and Babylon. Amen. He hath, as it were, the strength of a unicorn. Surely there is, <coughs> there is no enchantment against Jacob, Neither is there any divination against Israel. According to this time shall be said of Jacob and of Israel, What hath God wrought? Yes, amen. Our Lord will look on his churches <clears throat> and say, It is a glorious church, amen. not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. Now we certainly cannot say that about the professed churches in our time right now <clears throat> in general 
But when Babylon falls, these things will come to be, brethren. All the superstructure and workings of that great city will fall. The oppressive spirit of sleep and ignorance will have been put down, and the light of the gospel of Jesus Christ will shine from his church. I know that I closed with this text in Revelation chapter 19 last time, but I want to leave you with this heavenly scene again. This is the great triumph. Revelation chapter 19. This is the triumph in heaven after the fall of Babylon in Revelation chapter 18. So now let your hearts meditate upon these things, brethren. And after these things, that is after the fall of Babylon, <clears throat> I heard a great voice of much people in heaven saying, Alleluia! Salvation and glory and honor and power unto the Lord our God. For a true and righteous are his judgments. For he hath judged the great whore which did corrupt the earth with her fornication, and hath avenged the blood of his servants at her hand. And again they said, Alleluia! And her smoke rose up forever and ever. And the four and twenty elders and the four beasts fell down and worshipped God that sat on the throne. They say in agreement, Amen! Alleluia! Amen. And a voice came out of the throne saying, Praise our God, all ye his servants, and ye that fear him both small and great. And I heard, as it were, the voice of a great multitude, and as the voice of many waters, and as the voice of mighty thunderings, say, Alleluia! For the Lord God omnipotent reigneth! Amen. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him, for the marriage of the Lamb is come. And his wife, and his wife hath made herself ready. Amen. And to her, that is those that overcame, those that were delivered from great Babylon, to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white. For the fine linen is the righteousness of the saints. And he saith unto me, Write, Blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he saith unto me, These are the true sayings of God. Amen. Amen.